Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Every Wednesday, Mark and Kim, along with their special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark and Kim will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark and Kim are tested, certified, and professional spiritual mediums, metaphysical teachers, healers, and spiritual advisors with their own individual spiritual practices in Seattle, Washington, and Los Angeles, California. You are the inspired and the inspiration. Thomas Jefferson once said, nothing can stop the man with the right mental attitude from achieving his goal. Nothing on earth can help the man with the wrong mental attitude. This is Inspired Living with Mark and Kim here on Ohm Times Radio. And I just actually read that quote out of one of my favorite books that I've been reading. And we're going to be uh, getting into that just in a little bit here. But at first, wanted to say hello to all the spiritual prospectors out there and hello to all of our inspired listeners around the world. Thank you so much for tuning in to the live show, Inspired Living with Mark and Kemp, here on Ohm Times Radio. If you are catching this show over on demand, whether it's through uh, iTunes, YouTube, uh, Ohm Times Radio Archive, SoundCloud, or Podbean, thanks for downloading the show. We hope we are helping to get everyone on a path of being inspired, celebrating life, asking lots of questions, and living your life to the full potential. I always say life is short, so live it. I am your co-host, Mark Lanehart, the Seattle Seer. Some, one of my clients just uh, gave me this nickname, the Seattle Seer, so I thought I'd use it today on the air. And uh, today is a big show for Kim and I. We are celebrating 50-plus shows of Inspired Living Radio here on Ohm Times. Uh, this journey for Kim and I started a year ago, and we've had some amazing guests, awesome topics, inspiring shows, and we are working even harder uh, to bring the next 50 shows of Inspired Living to you with uh, open phone lines, more social media interaction, and hopefully live in-person workshops of Inspired Living with some of our former guests that we've had on the show and uh, joining up to uh, have a conference and a workshop with them. So we are looking forward to the next 50 shows, and we just want to say thank you for listening for the last 50 shows. So... With that, I'm going to bring on my fabulous co-host, Kim Thalkin, founder of Love First Down in Encino, California. Hello, Kim. Can you believe it's been 50-plus shows? Hi, Mark. You're making me smile over here. No, I cannot. I don't know where the time goes, but it's really unbelievable. We think about you know, all the, the guests that we've had on and their different backgrounds and areas of expertise and mm-hmm. the knowledge that they shared with us and all the things that we've learned over these last 50 oh my gosh. Uh, plus <laughs> weeks, right? Yeah. I mean, it's really run the gamut from, um, I don't know, goodness, uh, what do you, um, animal totems to uh, a U.S. ambassador. Yeah, we're, we're continuing to show on with a former U.S. ambassador. How amazing is that? Yeah, so um, to all kinds of th- uh, things like greening death. Who would have thought of that? I mean, to, of course, you know, other psychic mediums out there. So we've just been all over all over and back. And we're so happy that you have um, been a part of this experience with us. Thank you to our inspired community. We really do love you, appreciate you. And um, uh, you're part of what makes me happy. So thank you. Uh, As Mark said, I am the founder of Love First, where life transformations happen in Encino, California. I can be found at lovefirst.info. If you are needing support in the way of healings, readings, hypnotherapy, spiritual development, please give me a call. I would be honored to work with you. Mark, you've done a great job of already covering what social media outlets our listeners can find us on. The great news is that every show, every live show goes uh, uh, to podcasts made available on demand um, at any time, any place you choose. When you're ready to listen to us, we're available. So um, thank you for downloading our podcast as well. 
Um, I guess we can move into our inspired affirmation. As you know, we have a monthly affirmation that we work with. And this month's affirmation is the universe is working in my favor each and every day. Yes, it is. And how grateful are we? Or as, you know, Mark, I want to share. Last week I was um, in a, a mediumship workshop with Mavis Patilla, and it just made me think of how she would start off her prayers or sayings Say uh, when she would say, blessed are we, blessed am I, blessed are we. Yes, we are. And the universe is working in our favor each and every day. That's awesome. And I love Mavis. I, um, I uh, got to visit with her a couple weeks ago and learn under her, and she's just a great spiritual teacher. And, you know, she is. I tell you, you know, it's like you could just be in her presence, and she just has such a beautiful way about her and a beautiful way of explaining life mm. and also the afterlife. Um, you just you feel better when you're when you're in someone like that's presence. So yeah, she's got a beautiful delivery of how she uh, communicates on the spiritual world. And she does the other thing, uh, just you know, with Home Times Radio for this for the last fifty shows of last year, what I love about Home Times is you can listen to our shows anywhere, anytime around the world. You don't need to download anything. There's no sign up. There's no password. Uh, you can listen to on your, you know, whatever phone you have, whatever tablet you have or your computer. And that's what I love because, you know, we get a lot of feedback from people all around the world that they love the interaction of our Facebook page, which is Inspired Living Radio. And uh, we're going to have open phone lines here, hopefully. So we'll, um, you know, be able to talk with our inspired listeners and have them engage with our um Special guest, but for today's show, Kim, we are not doing open phone lines. We want to dedicate the next hour um, to a former U.S. ambassador of the United States uh, who has uh, kindly agreed to be on Inspired Living Radio, and we want to get into his new book that's coming out. I, I was able to read an advanced reading copy of it, um, and it's a fantastic book called "The Powers: Twelve Principles to Transform Your Life from Ordinary." To extraordinary, and I love Mark's story. And I just want to read a little bit um, of the journey that Mark uh, has been on, and then we'll bring him live onto the air here before we go to our first break. Uh, but he is the president of Irwin Capital Incorporated. He's a board member of the Council of American Ambassadors. He's a former U.S. ambassador and author of The Powers: Twelve Principles to Transform Your Life. Uh, that's going to be available. It's a, it actually just came out. It came out on June 28th uh, through Skyhorse Publishing. Uh, he was born in Coral Gables, Florida, and his opportunities to learn from difficult experiences started early, being born to a mother from a wealthy family, struggling with mental health issues. Mark's mother had lost nearly all of her wealth, and they had gone from the – instead of rags to riches story, they went from the riches to rags story. And during his teen years, Mark began rebelling and was expelled from high school. Mark's life was transformed when in 1961, at the age of 16, he was arrested for forging checks on his mother's account. And given the choice of going to jail for four years or enlisting in the military, Mark served in the United States, not United States Air Force. With newfound discipline and determination, Mark decided to turn his life around. After studying uh, four years at the University of Tennessee, Mark began his real estate career at the United Parcel Service, UPS, as a real estate manager in 1969. Deciding to branch out and work for himself, Mark created a property development and investment company in 1978. Through this, Mark developed shopping centers, offices, and residential while also acquiring investment properties. Then in 1982, he and a partner created Crossland Irwin Associate, Associates in Charlotte, North Carolina, and went on to develop several million square feet of commercial and mixed-use projects. Then in 1991... Mark sold his interest in the development company to his partner and created Irwin Capital Incorporated to hold his family's investments. Mark went on to serve the Clinton administration in two positions. President Clinton first appointed him to the board of directors of the Overseas Private Investment Corporation, and then he was later asked to serve as the United States ambassador to the regional embassy serving the Republic of – now, I don't know, if uh, Mark, if I'm saying this right uh, – Meritus, the Republic of – Sanchelis and the Mauritius. federal Mauritius. Okay, Mauritius. I Mauritius think Mauritius yes. and the Republic of Seychelles, Seychelles and the federal Islamic Republic of Comoros. Comoros. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Whew, that's a lot of that's a lot of words there. But it's well <laughs> it really is. But we wanted to bring you onto the show. Thank you so much for agreeing to uh talk about your new book. Uh this has been one of my favorite books to read in the last uh, two weeks, and I read a lot of books. So, welcome to Inspired Living. Welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm so pleased to be with you all, and I love what you're doing. You have such a uh, exciting new way of approaching things, and and you should be very proud. Of yourself, especially given that you uh, have just celebrated your 50th. Um, session on the uh, program. Yes, thank you so much. So um, just uh, we have a couple minutes here, Mr. Ambassador, before we go to our first break, but just wanted to, uh, if you would, just introduce yourself to the inspired listeners, the inspired community around the world who are listening in, and uh, uh, let's get just to know you a little bit better. We have the next 45 minutes to talk about the book, uh, why you wrote the book and some of the uh, inspirations that helped you write the book. I think that's very fascinating and some of the people that inspired you to write the book. Sure. Uh, well, uh, this book, I hope, is my legacy. Uh, as you can tell from the dates that were expressed earlier in my bio, uh, I'm uh, I'm now 72 years old and, and I've succeeded far beyond my own expectations. And so I've spent the last writing this book in order to pass on to the next generations uh, some some, uh, uh, thoughts and ideas and the principles that I lived by, which in turn took me to a, carried me to, um, uh, to, uh, from ordinary to extraordinary, as I say in the book. So, Mr. Ambassador, hold that thought. When we hear the whistle, that means it's time for us to cut away to a two-minute break. Uh, But if you just hold that thought, we're going to return here with our special guest today, former U.S. Ambassador Mark Irwin, talking about the powers. Stay tuned. This is Inspired Living Radio on Ohm Times Radio. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Eros Evolution is where sexuality and spirituality meets. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee, on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, on Ohm Times Radio. Are you seeking answers to life questions? Would you like to connect to a departed loved one? Are you suffering from pain, stress, or anxiety? Kimberly Thalkin is a tested, certified, and professional psychic, spiritual medium, energy healer, hypnotherapist, and the founder of Love First, where life transformations happen. Love First services support, guide, and empower individuals by connecting them to their highest potential to live a healthier, joyful, and meaningful life that's filled with purpose. All services can be done by phone, Skype, or in person in Encino, California. Please visit lovefirst.info. That's L-O-V-E-F-I-R-S-T dot info for more information. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business and share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance, Mondays at 9pm Eastern Time. The best of the holistic, spiritual and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back to Inspired Living with Mark and Kemp here on Ohm Times Radio, the voice of consciousness. 
Special guest today, former U.S. Ambassador Mark Uren, talking about his new release of the book called The Powers, 12 Principles to Transform Your Life from Ordinary to Extraordinary. This book is awesome, people. You're going to want to definitely check it out. We'll post it on our Facebook and Twitter pages. And then also during the show, we'll uh, let you know where you, uh, you can go actually get uh, the copy on Amazon or through Skyhorse Publishing. So before the break, Mr. Ambassador, we were just kind of getting to know you and talking about um, – your journey in, in writing the book and, and that you're a young 72 and have lived just a, a very extraordinary life yourself. Well, I've been blessed and I've been blessed uh, far beyond anything I could have ever expected, but it all started Mark, uh, with meeting the Lord while I was sitting in jail, uh, waiting for my sentencing. And uh, I reached out to the Lord and told the Lord that I was ashamed of myself and, uh, that he, if he would give me another chance, I would do everything in my power to uh, to do what he expected of me through the rest of my life. And sure enough, he he did give me another chance because it was just in, within a few days that the judge gave me the choice of going into the military. Uh, and uh, the first thing I did was say, thank you, Lord. And then I thank the judge. <laughs> Yeah, and what and you know, for the judge to see the potential in you versus, you know, I don't know if that works in this day and age. You know, having the choice of either going to prison or serving in the military, and so I just want to also thank you. My my father served in the Air Force for thirty years, so thank you for your service, not only to our military, but also thank you for your service to our country. Yes, thank you, so. thank you, thank you very much, and thank you to the judge that allowed you to do that because this would have been a whole different story if he would have gone to prison. I imagine. It really would have been. There's no question about it. (laughs) So, Mr. Ambassador, what inspired you to write The Powers? The the Powers uh, came really from my granddaughter because my granddaughter uh, asked me to to write a book uh, and uh, tell my story. Uh, And I decided to write a book and tell my story, not just to her, but to tell it to people that will never know me uh, so that hopefully they can gain some knowledge and wisdom uh, that I had to gain the hard way. And perhaps they can gain uh, in a, uh, a more uh, pleasant fashion than I had to. And in the book, yeah, I think this is the uh, one of the chapters on the power of vision um, I, I like how the book, how you break the book down. It's very, it's a very easy read for our listeners out there. It's a very uh, fun and enjoyable read, and I, I, I read through it probably within a, a few hours. Um, I'm actually reading it my uh, second time, but I, I liked what um, former uh, President Bill Clinton said to you about succeeding and how to spend time thinking about tomorrow's and not yesterday's. And there's just a lot of good gold nuggets in here um, on how to use these principles, uh, you know, coming from your background, how to use the power of the brain, the power the power within you. Um, would you just talk a little bit about that, some of the different chapters? Sure. Um, I start out with the power of you, which, which uh, asks the reader to spend some time with themselves and try to learn who they really are, because most people don't really have a clue of exactly who they are. They just, <coughs> excuse me, they just sort of go through life and take what comes at them, uh, but they um, don't spend any time analyzing their strengths and weaknesses. And so that's the that's the first part. And there, there are plenty of ways to... Uh, to analyze yourself, and you you can look at uh, you can look at uh, different tests that are described. In the book that you can t- easily take, uh, but get to know yourself. Take the time to do that uh, because that's the foundation that you, you have to work with. The next chapter talks. Excuse me, I've got a little cough. <coughs> the next chapter talks about the power of the brain and. Again, most people are not aware of the fact that they have this incredible, uh, most complex uh, uh, attachment to their shoulders, uh, which is the human brain. We have never approached anything as complex as the human brain in, in humankind before. And even persons of 
what we would all consider average IQ have so much potential. It's not really based on IQ alone. Uh, success is not, but success is based upon lots of different things, including your your EQ. Um, <coughs> pardon me, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, and all different kinds of measures. So it's important to know who you are, not just who you think you are, but know who you really are. Uh, and, and this and that chapter will take you there. But then then understanding the incredible uh, depth of the power of the brain and the flexibility of the brain uh, and how it, it is a plastic or uh, flexible uh, a brain that continues to learn every day. Uh, and once you realize that you can influence your brain by working it harder, you're not just stuck in a rut of saying, well, I'm, I don't know this and I don't know that. And so therefore I'm no good. You can develop yourself. Uh, and so that, that again is sort of giving us some enlightenment to the, to the reader. But then the important part is the power of vision, which you referred to a minute ago. If you don't have a real vision of who you are and what you want to become and where you want to go in life, you'll drift around like a cork in a bobbing sea uh, carried by the, the winds and the tides and all other kinds of things. But if you have a good, clear vision of where and what you want to become, <laughs> you can, you can uh, achieve great, great things. I talk about a guy named David Murdoch in there who is a, a, a multi-billionaire who has like a ninth grade education, I think it is. Uh, but he's self-taught and um, uh, a self-learner. Uh, and the things that he's been able to accomplish uh, from essentially living on a park bench uh, will just inspire anybody and everybody. Mark, Mark, can I ask yes. a quick question? Sure. So, it, you know, you hear these stories. First of all, I, I love how you say, you know, you've got to understand yourself more because I think that's what a lot of people are, um, it, at least in my practice with my clients, that, that there's an importance of connecting within, connecting to who it is you are. So I love that you um, ask people to start there first and give them one way of doing it, which is analyzing your strengths and weaknesses. The other thing is when you talk about what having a, a general sense or a great sense of what it is you know, you want to do, I think a lot of people get stuck there. They don't know and they don't know how to go about figuring out what what it is that they want to do with their lives. Now, um, it feels like the Air Force gave you a great sense of that with the structure and all the other wonderful things that come with the military and the knowledge you learn and all that. What, what would you what would you suggest to somebody who's trying to better understand what it is they want to do? Uh, there are uh, numerous tests that people can take. You can go to them online. Uh, the, um, there are personality tests which tell where your personality strengths and weaknesses lie. There are interest tests that, that can share with you uh, where your strongest interests lie. Uh, so you can get an independent view, an outside view of who you are through these tests. There are also counselors that that can do this, as you know, uh, mm -hmm. that can help guide people. Uh, so, so many people decide they're going to become a dentist because their father was a dentist or a lawyer because their father was a lawyer. And so many of those people end up very unhappy because they didn't find that thing which got them up in the morning and gave them the passion of, of each and every day. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they missed out because they just assumed that they had to do what their parents told them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Isn't so, that the truth? Yeah. Mm hmm So you're 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 in charge of your own ship <laughs> is one way of saying it. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, your parents raise you, your family um, nourishes you, hopefully, but ultimately it's your ship and you need to take it out into the great big ocean of the world uh, and sail it toward a direction. Uh, seek, seek what it is that is your vision 
and stay on course toward that vision. Uh, and one of the ways to stay on course toward that vision using the same uh, metaphor is you need to have a chart, uh, which would be your goals. And those are the stopping points along the way to your vision. Uh, I realized when I was 18 years old, uh, and once I got some self-discipline and some discipline in me and, and started realizing that I could be somebody and there was only one person that could make me somebody, and it was me. Mm-hmm. So at 18... Um, uh, set out a written vision and a goal. And the vision was to restore my family's wealth and prestige. And the goal was that I would be a millionaire by the time I was 40. Now, I was 18, had no education, had three more years of impressed service into the mil- in the military. Uh, and yet I set that audacious goal. I wrote it down and put it in my pocket and carried it for 18 years. Uh, and work toward the, that goal and on that vision, the whole path. <laughs> I'm happy to report that I achieved that goal at age 38. Well, that that certainly is so unbelievably impressive. Um, and I, I love how you're out there sharing with others how they can do the same with the message of everybody is the uh, the the captain of their own ship because so many people real so many people feel that they're being controlled by outside circumstances. So this is a nice reminder that you know we are in in control of the lives that we want to create for ourselves. Um, Mark, I have a question for you. you. Brought up an example of a gentleman in your book who. Um, went to the ninth grade and became a millionaire. Um, millionaire. And that is our that is our cue here that we're heading into our second break already. Time is flying by with just our, our great guest here with so much knowledge to share. Stay with us and we'll be back in two minutes and we'll continue our conversation with former U.S. Ambassador Mark Irwin. Thank you. The Real Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are are the the inspired inspired and the inspiration. inspiration. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, Radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit MarkLaneHart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money? that business is hard. 
I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicers, on the Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. And welcome back, inspired listeners, to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim and our special guest today, Mark Irwin. So, Mark, before we went on break, um, I was asking you a question about the uh, millionaire who had a ninth grade education and was able to create something from him for himself by a lot of the time sitting on a bark a park bench. Excuse me. <clears throat> Why do you think? What's the difference between? someone like this gentleman and someone who maybe goes off and gets their master's degree, their law degree, their PhD, but it may not be able to achieve the same thing. And he's only gone to ninth grade. Well, you know, his name is David Murdoch. uh, And uh, David uh, is uh, an incredible story. He is uh, one of the wealthiest men in America today. He owns, among other things, Dole Foods and uh, huge whole but he has painted on one of his buildings to do the impossible you must first see the invisible in other words you must have a vision uh, and the vision is to see the invisible things that can't be seen uh, mm. and and that's what carried him uh, through uh, he um, he had no formal education but he says today that the thousands of people, he now employs all have higher educational uh, uh, qualities than he, but the fact of the matter is he was an autodidact. He was a self-study person who learned on his own. Um, his grand vision today, and he's 92 years old, uh, is to uh, build a state-of-the-art biotechnology research center here in North Carolina. And he's personally spent so far a half a billion dollars on that project in order to help people change to a plant-based diet uh, for maximum wow. life. So he is an incredible, incredible person, and he's planning his 110th birthday. Uh, <laughs> I had to do a double take on that. Wait a sec. I thought we just talked about him being in his 90s. That is great. I love that. I that, really love that's that. Vision, that's vision, Kim. That's vision. Support. I know that threw me for a surprise. And then I go, oh, wait a sec. Okay. <laughs> and I, I, I love how he is. Um, He's he's not only, uh, you know, doing all these uh, entrepreneurial things, but also uh, it, promoting plant-based diets that's really incredible he's got five universities all working together on a campus that he built uh to study uh more closely and learn the value of plants as opposed to uh, meat uh, mm-hmm. uh, a meat-based diet because he thinks that the, the world is far better off with much more plant-based foods and and he's never been sick a day in his life. Unbelievable. Well, that is unbelievable. And I think there's a lot to be said about that and all the nutrients that come just from from the earth itself. Um, so, wow. Okay. I'd love to learn more about that uh, on another show. But um, all right. So very interesting. Very interesting. What about, um, you know, what are some of, with all the research that you've done and the book you've written, um, what are some of the common traits of successful people that you found? Well, they're all covered in in, in my book, The Powers. Uh, it, it's a, a focus on persistence and, and the importance of persistence to success in anything. And don't forget, persistence doesn't really become a factor until you fail. Uh, because if you don't, if you don't fail, you don't need persistence. You just keep going. Mm-hmm. But so I think that failure is important, is critical to success. And you can't find anybody who has been successful who cannot tell you dozens of stories about their own failures first. 
So, so it's important to understand that persistence or not giving up, not quitting, uh, is, is absolutely the core value that anybody who wants to be successful at anything is going to have to, are going to have to own and control is their ability to persist even when it feels like they should give up. Uh, so that, that is absolutely critical. Babe Ruth, the great baseball player, said, it's hard to beat a person who never gives up. <laughs> I love that, too. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> true, All right. True. Well, you know, it's it's interesting that you say that. It makes all the sense in the world. I remember when I was in school, we're looking at different case studies and stuff. And I remember this one company used to have failure parties. And we all thought, what is that about? But, yeah, it was to encourage people to keep moving forward and to, you know, not um, not create limitations for yourself because of a fear of failure. So they would actually have failure parties. <laughs> but um, I could see the importance of, uh, certainly the importance of persistence. Well, you know, one of the other things that I talk about in the book is that procrastination is the best friend of failure, because those who put off till tomorrow usually never do it. Uh, and so it's, it's uh, procrastination is, is an enemy of success. It really is. Yes. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. I was just taking notes on that one quote. I think it's important to post. You said it's hard to beat someone who is persistent. Never. It's hard to beat someone who never quits. Oh, who never quits. OK, <laughs> we got to yeah. put that up, Mark, on social media. And that was Babe Ruth. That was Babe Ruth. Yeah. All right. Great, yeah, great, great Babe. Ruth. Babe. Now, um, so so Mark, you you had said you had you were in in jail, and you were you were praying or asking the Lord for some assistance, and I know that you're also, I believe, a minister. So, tell us a little bit about what your thoughts are the importance of having faith of your of of one's faith. Um, well, when it comes to happiness and personal success, let's say. Well, faith is sort of like the wind. You can see it, but you know it's there. Uh, and to me, faith is an understanding that the universe was formed under God's command by, uh, by a power greater than we have the ability to understand. And that power goes by a thousand names around the world, but it's and we happen to call it God here. Uh, but without understanding that, that the power that rules everything is so much greater than any of us that we would be considered ants on the back of an elephant. Uh, and so having faith uh, and exercising your faith in that power and believing in that power uh, is completely critical to real success. Now, you can achieve success, but it's not going to be real and lasting success. You know, through through the stages of life, we all go from uh, the survival mode when we're first born, uh, where all we need to do is uh, eat and have a comfortable environment. And uh, if we're not comfortable, we, we let somebody know. Uh, but that's in survival mode. And then later on, you move to a sustainable mode where you can sustain yourself day to day and, you know, you've grown up a little bit. You don't have to rely on your family uh, anymore. And, and so you can take care of your own family. And then as you move up this pyramid of life, you move into success, which would be when, when you succeed beyond what you had hoped that you could accomplish at certain levels of your life. But then it goes from, from success to significance. And that's when you try to reach out and share uh, your your uh, gifts that you've received with others uh, and and share that through trying to become significant, not to yourself, but to others. So reaching outside yourself. And the last step in that pyramid is legacy. And if you're fortunate enough to reach through all those other levels and and uh, get through significance, 
then leaving a legacy to generations to come like David Murdoch is working on right now. Uh, and like I'm trying to do with this book, which is pay it forward to generations that will never know me. Um, a lot of success books today are written by people who hope to become successful by writing books on success. My, mm. Mine is not the same. Mine is based upon uh, the lessons I learned by becoming successful and, and what, what I had to become successful, I guess, would be a better way of saying it. But, but faith to me is, is critical in my life. Critical. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I just so appreciate how in your message right now, how you moved, um, beyond thinking about oneself only in this process where you move from success to significance and being of service to other people. Thank you so much for sharing that, that message and, um, yeah, because when, when we talk about success, we're talking about what can we do for ourselves in ways of achievement and stuff like that normally. So I, I really love how your your message, um, you know, move beyond thinking about ourselves and, and ultimately being of service to others. So thank you for that. My pleasure. You know, on faith, I wanted to tell you what George Washington said about faith. He said it is impossible to account for the creation of the universe with the supreme being. Isn't that amazing? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that again? You kind of cut out there. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, George Washington said it is impossible to account for the creation of the universe without the agency of a supreme being. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, but for, for some of us, that's very easy to to grasp that that notion, that concept. Certainly it is for me. I know it is for you, probably for a lot of our listeners. Um, what about for those? And you know what? That is our, our third and final break here. I'd love to continue on with this thought when we return in two minutes. Uh, stay with us. We'll be back in two minutes with our special guest today, Mark Irwin. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. The truth is, you can't change the world if you're broke. I know. I tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom-based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are, you are the, the inspired, inspired and the inspiration. inspiration. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. Are you wondering what is really going on behind the news? Check it out. Join your hosts, Cielito Pasquale and Diana Gold Holland on Share on the Air Radio for thought-provoking views behind the news Sundays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. You can also find us on shareontheairradio.org. 
This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. Check it out. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. And welcome back to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim and our special, special guest today, Mark Irwin. So, Mark, before we went to break, um, we were, I was in the middle of asking you a question. We were talking about um, a, a faith in a, a greater power. And then you gave that beautiful quote from uh, George Washington. And I was saying that, you know, for, for, for me or for you, that may be really um, an easy thing for us to grasp. Um, what would you say to those people out there who may be listening, who's, who's struggling with their faith right now, who's not, they're not sure, or they're not convinced that there is anything greater than themselves? Uh, well, you know, that's a tough question uh, because faith is like the wind. You can't see it. But if you if it's there and you know it's there, it, it gives you a better life. Uh, I don't really know uh, how to comfort somebody that feels that there is no greater power. But uh, Dr. Francis Collins, who uh, decoded the, the human genome, uh, said about faith that all of his studies of the way the human being has been have been has been created over history just confirms uh, that in fact religion or faith should I say uh, and science do coexist together and confirm each other uh, so the, the the idea is that that without Science, we would understand a lot less, but without faith, we don't understand anything. Interesting. Very, uh, very interesting. Um, so, uh, Mark, did you have a question? I thought you had a question coming up here. Yeah, a couple questions. One of the things in the book that really stands out to me, Mark, is the chapter um, where you talked about, and you had made mention this earlier in the show about personal personality profiles, and um, you know how important it is to understand how you think and how you react to others. And for our inspired listeners out there, if you've never taken a personality test, I highly recommend it. It's actually what has put me on the path to be doing the work that I'm doing. I actually took the the Myers-Briggs. And in the book, um, Mark breaks down all the different uh, indicator types of what personality you would be uh, in life. Believe it or not, I'm um, I'm the inspirer. So I'm a ENFP. I'm the person that uh, is you know a free spirit and the inspirer. But I didn't know that because I'd worked in government jobs most of my career and being the inspirer and taking that personality test helped me put me on the path that I am today. So I would recommend not only reading the book, but also finding out what personality type that you are. Uh, that, that's so critical. And uh, it involves your emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. you know, everybody knows about IQ, but most people don't know about EQ, which is, which is how you handle uh, your intelligence and what motivates you and what doesn't motivate you. And the Myers-Briggs test, which you can literally take online now for $50, mm -hmm. uh, really is insightful. I've used it with all of my employees over the many years uh, to give them a better understanding of who they are and make sure that they are a closer fit to the personality type I'm looking for for the particular job I'm trying to fill. Right, right. Yeah, and, I, and one of the one of the questions I have, being on this this path of being the inspire and, and doing the radio show here in Seattle and having my spiritual practice, you know, is dreaming big. And dreaming big can be overwhelming. How do you identify what you really want and how to get it? Um, and really, just maybe carve out the main takeaway of your book, the powers and the twelve principles for those of us that do dream big. Well, dreaming big uh, is um, is critical to creating the vision that you must have. Uh, and if you have a small vision, it, it won't be a challenge, but you're not going to be very satisfied either. So 
you know, for years and years as children, we were told, stop daydreaming, especially in our school classes and so on. Don't break, don't, don't sit there daydreaming, things of that nature. And our parents might say that to us. But in fact, where would we be in the world? We, we wouldn't have a Thomas Edison or a Picasso or a, uh, many, many uh, of the brilliant people, Einstein, if mm-hmm. they had not been allowed to dream big and think far beyond where others had thought. So there is no limitations to the size of dreams that you can have. Uh, and there is no limitation to the greatness you can achieve. Just just look through history. History is full of people who uh, far exceeded any expectation anybody had by a factor of a thousand. So there, there are no limits. It, you only limit yourself by deciding that you have limits. But there really are no other limits to what you can become. Uh, and I'm an ENTJ, by the way. I'm, I'm the commander, the general. <laughs> um, so, but take that test. Uh, I would advise anybody and everybody to take that test. Uh, Myers-Briggs is a proven system of determining uh, uh, better who you are as an individual. In one of the uh, one of the, in one of the chapters, you also talked about the triangle of success as far as um, having a lot of impact on you. Could you talk a little bit about what the triangle of success is for our inspired listeners that don't know what it is? Well, you know, the triangle of success uh, was. Uh, taught to me by a fellow who, uh, whose name was George Shin. And George Shin uh, lived, lived here in Charlotte, and he was a very uninspiring young man. Um, he graduated last in his high school class. He was from a very poor family. And back then, he was entitled to free lunch, and all the other kids teased him because he was poor. And, and had to take the free lunch, and that had a taint to it. But his mother uh, taught him a great thing, and, and it was the triangle of success. She said, you need three things to be a success in life. First, you have to have good health, because without good health, uh, you have nothing else. And then you have to have a positive attitude. Uh, you have to have a positive outlook, and this is a this is a young man who didn't have a very positive outlook. He didn't think much of himself, and probably was not brightest bulb in the class. But then the third leg, and the one that she emphasized all her life, was faith, because the foundation of the triangle for her is faith, primarily in God, and then yourself and others is what she said. Well, George Shin went on to uh, go to night school because he had promised his mother that he would succeed. And he had gotten so angry at being, at being um, ridiculed in, in grade school that he said, I will never be in a position again where others can ridicule me. Uh, he went on to work in, uh, in the uh, uh, school systems for uh, private colleges. Uh, he developed a whole new way of looking at private school education. Uh, he bought a bunch of private schools one at a time, just building on his new method. Uh, he ended up creating a NBA basketball team in Charlotte called the Hornets. Yep, yep. Uh, this is a guy who went on to huge success from a beginning that most people would have said, George is going to be a failure. There's just no question George is not going to be much. Mm-hmm. Well, he fooled everybody. So it was, a, it was a bit of fear of failure because he didn't want to disappoint his mother. It was the value of his mother's wisdom. And she was a simple lady. She worked in the mill. Um, but she had this great wisdom about the triangle of success. And he wasn't going to disappoint her. Uh, and he went on to to build a vision. He had a vision when everybody else said um, Charlotte was not ready for an NBA expansion team. He said, I think it is. Uh, And by golly, he pulled it off. Uh, (laughs) The the more conventional people in town, the the other successful people in town said, no, he's right. No, it's not ready yet. Well, guess what? It was that we had the most successful 
uh, NBA expansion team in the history of the NBA. Yeah, and it just goes to show the the power of vision. Um, so, Mr. Ambassador, as we get ready to close the show here, one of the last chapters in the book, not the last chapter, but close to the end of the book, you also talked about the power of service. And I think that's very important. And uh, you actually had a Winston Churchill quote in there, and I, and I love Winston Churchill, um, where he says, you make a living by what you get, but you make a life by what you give. And I thought it was a nice chapter in the book talking about the power of service. And I liked at the end of the book where you talked about make a difference, do good, have fun, and never retire. I, I think that's uh, it's a very important message, and I think being in service to others is also very important. And um, I just want to, again, thank you for being a guest on the show. Thank you for your service. And I want to thank your granddaughter for making uh, – you know, for giving you the idea to write this book and encouraging you to write this book because it really is a great book. But before we close the show, Mr. Ambassador, where can folks find more information about you, about your book, and where can they buy the book? Uh, well, the, you can buy the book at Barnes and Noble and, and other bookstores. You can go online to Amazon and put in The Powers, Mark Irwin. It'll take you straight to the book. And, and, uh, and at Barnes and Noble online, you can you can buy it there. I have a Facebook page, uh, at Mark Irwin. Uh, I have a Twitter account. I have um, uh, a website, www.markirwin.net. Uh, and all of those sources will get you to me. I'm happy to report to you, Mark and Kim, that the book has been out for a little over two weeks now, and we're getting ready to do a second printing. It has just flown off the shelves. Awesome. Um, and, and that's just incredible. And, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you all uh, today and to your huge audience. Uh, thank you so much for this great opportunity. Well, thank, thank you so much, thank Mark, you, for Mr. being Ambassador. with us. Yep, we appreciate it. So as you can hear, them, that's the end of the show. Thanks for tuning in. We really uh, appreciate you being our inspired listeners. Uh, until next week, be kind, 